Hello? Hi, is this Kevin? Yes, it is. I was referred to you by... And I'm looking to have a video done for a project I have coming up. Sure. Can you briefly describe the project? First, I want to tell you my entire life story. I want to tell you how I became the success I am now, and all the connections I have for your future project. Oh, that's really not necessary. When I was a boy... One hour later. And that's how I got 20,000 followers on Instagram. That's amazing. So, can you describe what you're looking for for your video? Oh, well, I only need a super quick, super easy 60-second promo video of me and my company. Oh, sounds good. So, my rates are as follows. I was really hoping you could do this for free. Kevin, are you there? That is quite literally how 90% of my calls go. This got me thinking, why is it the majority of the population is willing to pay near full price for the goods and services they want, but when it comes to creative work of any kind, especially one that involves expensive camera equipment, all of a sudden prices have to drop next to zero. I mean, come on, tell me, be honest, how many times have you walked into a restaurant asking for free food? Not only am I certain you pay full price every time, but you also leave a tip. Now, I'm going to give these prospects and clients the benefit of a doubt and assume that they are not as cheap as they're making themselves sound. Instead, let's just say the camera work they're requesting is beyond their budget. I actually did a mini survey using IG stories asking why people thought camera work was cheap. And the responses seem to have two common themes. The first one being prospects can and will eventually find camera professionals who could work for less pay. And the second one is they just do not understand how complex and expensive camera work really is. Which is completely valid. I mean, that is why they are seeking a professional. They have no clue how to do what we do. Let's address the first common response. I can find someone who can do it for less. So these people are shopping for best price and I would suggest avoiding these types of projects. In my experience, it's always the ones who pay the least that are the most troublesome. They're completely unorganized. They never know what they want. They ask for a million revisions and they constantly ask for discounts. What they're willing to pay is not worth the headache that comes with working with them. Now, these are not necessarily bad people, but they are definitely less than ideal clients. Now, it's understandable that not everyone has the budget for professional camera work, but that is not the fault of the camera professional and they should not have to punish themselves by discounting their work just to reward a low budget client. What is at fault, however, is the industry as a whole. There are shooters who have been in the game a while and have built up their businesses, and then there are those who are just starting out with a single DSLR starter kit. And it's in this phase of our career is when we accept any and all jobs for little to no pay, just to build up a portfolio. Unfortunately, we do it this way because it helps boost the amount of gigs we receive in a short amount of time. With so many prospects and clients hiring these newbie shooters for next to nothing, it sets the expectation that camera work is cheap. Then when these same prospects and clients want to upgrade to someone with higher quality, maybe someone with more advanced equipment, their anchor for pricing is already super low. Next, let's move on to the second most common response of my survey. They just don't understand. They don't know how much camera equipment really costs, and they don't know what goes on behind the scenes with shooting and editing. Just for fun, let's see how much it would cost a client to film and edit a video on their own. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the Amazon prices for the equipment I'm using right now to make this talking head video. So to get this look and this sound, Here's what it costs. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, $1,295. Canon 85mm f1.8, $419. Newer Tripod, $84. Sennheiser E835 Microphone, $104. Amazon Basics XLR Cable, $12. Mini XLR Adapter for Blackmagic, $14. HP USN Softbox Lighting Kit, $135. Aperture Amaran H198, $98. Power Extra NPF 970 batteries, $35. DaVinci Resolve editing software, $300. Grand total, $2,496, almost 2,500 bucks, not including tax, just for this talking head video. Forget about drone work or gimbal work.
Now, let's take this $2,500 worth of equipment, pack it up, and drive an hour to the shoot location. Once we get there, maybe spend 30 minutes setting up, make sure the framing is right, make sure the lighting is good. Then, let's spend about three hours filming whatever we have to get. Three hours later. Okay, now that we're all done, let's take another 30 minutes to break everything down and pack it up, and then drive another hour back to the office. Now, let's spend another four to five hours scrubbing through all the footage, piecing together the timeline and then color grading. Oh, I forgot something. If a client were to do this on their own, they would have to know how to use editing software. Generally speaking, learning how to edit takes a few months, let's say three months to become proficient. So by the end of the project, we've spent $2,500, about 10 hours worth of work, and let's say three months worth of learning just to piece everything together. So of course we'll film for you for free. I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I can't wait to get all the exposure I'm gonna get to pay my rent. Forgive me, I am being sarcastic, but having said all of that, I'm not blaming anyone for not understanding how expensive professional camera work really is. Now, one can make the argument that discounted rates can be a reason for repeat business. Since the initial investment on camera equipment is most likely going to be a one-time thing, the video shooter can benefit from multiple bookings from one client if rates are lower. That may sound like a good deal, but the time and effort needed to use that equipment is recurring for every project that we take on. So yeah, we are using the same equipment over and over again, but our time and expertise are worth much more. Discounted rates for repeat business never seems like a win-win situation to me because all it means is I'm doing more work for less compensation than what my services are valued for, while the client client gets what they want at lower prices. Discounted rates is always a response to supply and demand, and that might work for material retail products, but when someone's time is involved, it's going to be a losing game. Someone may want to hire me at a discounted rate, while someone wants to work with me at my full rate. Who do you think I'm gonna choose? While this person is demanding a lower price, he's demanding my services. See the difference? Now, considering everything I've said in this video so far, Clients requesting discounted rates may very likely have something to do with how freelancers are perceived. For example, I doubt anyone would try to lowball a bigger company that had more equipment and more shooters. The bigger a company is and the more notoriety they have, the more value they appear to offer. Whereas a solo freelance camera person is perceived to have less leverage when facing the market because they have no corporate entity supporting them. While a bigger company has the potential to pay an employee a steady salary, independent of how much they actually work, a solo freelancer only gets paid when they have a project. So this camera person has to take my project for cheap because if he doesn't take my project at all, he doesn't get paid. If I were to work for a bigger company instead of just working for myself, I predict that there would be less attempts to lowball my prices because they would be up against the company's prices and not just my own. But I'm just not gonna do that. I'd much rather have the freedom to choose or reject projects as they come instead of having to answer to anybody else. I know this whole video sounds like I'm complaining, but that's because it's a frustrating subject. I don't want this video to come off as whiny or make us creators seem greedy, but I'm making this video to educate those who may not be aware of how expensive camera work really is. And hopefully, I drive the message home that creative work should be considered just as seriously as any other business, and asking for free service is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, what do you guys think? Are clients justified in requesting for discounts? Are we charging too much? Comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.